So I had this whiskey selected for me from a possible of six different 18 year olds from my collection. So whatever it is, I've had it before. But again, the point of these blind tastings isn't to try to figure out what it is, but to try to enjoy it without knowing what it is. So let's see how this one smells. Mm. Well, right away, it's not, nothing's jumping out at me, which is a good thing, I suppose. Definitely some nice malty notes. Mm. Let's get some smoky notes, which has me puzzled. Because there's not supposed to be any Islas in this, this, this choice of, of six whiskeys here. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure where that's coming from. All right, well, I'm going to sit this for a couple minutes. Come back when it starts some pairings. So I've been sipping this. Put some more whiskey in. Play with the water a little bit. I've got it back down pretty close to probably bottle strength. Um, now that I'm getting used to it, it doesn't feel like it's too strong. You know, a lot of the single malts are hanging around 43 or, or 40, um, some of them even 40 uh, ABV. Um, it's probably 43, not too much higher than that. Uh, it's got a nice maltiness to it, nice wood presence, um, you know, in the way a, a Scotch whiskey does. Um, You know, we know this is 18 years old. Uh, a, a little bit of um, clove and, and um, not cinnamon. Some other spices in there. A little bit of a flowery smell and flavor. Um, but not a lot of sweetness here. I got some almonds out. I like to use the um, smoked almonds with older whiskeys. They seem to... Um, counteract the the barrel influence so uh you up a few of these your mouth gets used to the woody notes of the nut and then when you take your sip of whiskey the wood in the whiskey gets diminished a little bit because your, your palate's already used to the woody notes of the nuts you're eating it helps you taste different things different aspects of the whiskey Already a little more sweetness from the whiskey comes out. Some of the meadow flowers. Like the the the, the, the smell of, of wildflowers kind of in the fall, those those late season flowers that come out. Alright, well we're back and we brought in some dark chocolate here. So I'm gonna Break a little piece of it. We got the 86. I like 86 when I'm pairing it with a whiskey. Um, it's dark enough that it's, it's got the, the bitterness that really kind of just overwhelms your mouth with that 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 wonderful bittersweet flavor of the of the chocolate. And it definitely helps me sort of understand the bitterness in a whiskey. Um, kind of levels things out a little bit. I'm going to let the chocolate get all over my mouth, my mouth coat my palate. The dark, wonderful bitterness of that of the chocolate. You really let it sink in. Mm. It's amazing. The smell of the whiskey, it, it even smells sweeter um, just without even tasting it yet with the dark chocolate in my mouth. Much sweeter experience now. Mm. Almost like a, um, a a honeysuckle, you know, um, not like a bee's honey, but like the the, the, the taste of a honeysuckle, the, the the nectar, bee's nectar, 
Um, definitely brings out, brightens this whiskey up a little bit. Um, I mean, I haven't added water to it in this, the last couple pours. It's definitely smoothing out. Definitely get much sweeter. Really nice maltiness. The single, the single malts, the eighteen-year-old single malts, always have a really nice, you know, malty flavor. Um, kind of those cereal notes that that blend well with the that second use or third use or whatever it is. Um, eighteen-year-old barrel, that, that eighteen years it, it's spent with that used barrel. Um, you know, the, the wood is has a presence, but of course it presents differently than a whiskey would present had it spent time in a new barrel. Now I'm really getting a sweetness on the, the, the tip of my tongue, along the sides of my tongue. Mm. And I'm going to spend a few minutes with this, with the chocolate and the almonds. I'm going to come back and i got some cheese to try with it. Mm. Alright, so I've been... Sipping this with the nuts and the chocolate, it's really starting to come together nice. The, the whiskey really is, is, is starting to open up. When I first sipped it uh, tonight, uh, I had some bitterness. It didn't seem, you know, like it was quite in balance. I think it was just me. I didn't, uh, usually I'll drink a glass or two of whiskey before I do these videos, and I had just one small glass, um, and I think it's just, it's my palate's just now waking up to this. It's a great whiskey. Tastes good. Full, you know, single malt scotch whiskey. Um, the almonds sort of let me see past the, the, the barrel notes a little bit. I got a little bit more of the, the sweetness and the maltiness. The chocolate subsided that bitterness a little bit. And I definitely got more of that sort of, the, you know, they talk about the heather sweetness. Um, and I got, I, I was getting sort of like the, the flavor of the honeysuckle plant, the way it smells, the sweetness, the um, really light sweetness. Mm. So... I got a cheese. Now, I knew we were doing a, um, an 18-year-old single malt tonight, and I knew it wasn't going to be a smoky Isla. So I selected for tonight a, um, a, a triple cream French cheese, Saint André. Mm, you can just smell the rininess on this one. Um, I didn't pick something as pungent as a blue or Roquefort or, or a Poisse or anything like that. Um, what that I would have, you know, loved to have had, had this been an Isla selection. Uh, I wanted to get a cheese that was very greasy and fatty, um, but not overwhelming in flavor. Something strong, something that would fill my palate. Um, and I, I chose this this uh, three cream cheese. Um, and these are this is a really nice, rich cheese. Now, what I like about the the cheese, um, just like the almond. I mean, an almond is, is of a tree. And it, you know, it's a, a tree is wood, and it tends to diminish the wood notes in a whiskey, and the chocolate, being bitter as it is, diminishes the bitter notes. So whatever you're 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 putting in your mouth and filling with your mouth as a pairing, it's going to counteract what those nuances that that are present in a whiskey. What I'm hoping to do with this um, this creamed, uh, you know, triple cream um, uh, cheese here is to put this sort of this, this, the, the, the fattiness of the cheese in there and reduce a little bit of the, the fatty, the, the lipoids, lipoids um, of the whiskey um, just to let me see a different part of the whiskey a little bit. Um, now, as you guys know, I don't like to use crackers because crackers are just a waste of space in your mouth. For a good cheese, you don't need a cracker. Mmm, that is a good cheese. Creaminess saltiness completely I mean I feel like I can taste this cheese in the roof of my mouth it's just everywhere in my mouth I, I, I can get the flavors of this cheese um the the rind it's sticking in my teeth and the greasiness is all the way down my throat wonderful cheese and the whiskey that, that sharpness of the alcohol is just cutting through it, complementing the cheese. 
Sweetness of the whiskey is coming forward. That really wakes the whiskey up. I, I'm getting more um, like uh, spicy notes. Um, not just the, the 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 typical, you know, you hear about the spinach or the uh, the cinnamon, the clove. Uh, I'm getting more more complex spice notes here. How much herbal notes? Parsley, raw spinach. Um, really neat interaction here with this cheese. The cheese is great by itself, but it really works with the whiskey. Mm. Throw some almonds into this mix. So I've been sipping this with some cheese. Um, I'm, I'm continuing to get some so these, these herbal notes. Um, the the, the uh, parsley, dill, um, and I wasn't tasting this at all with the whiskey um, before I had it with the cheese. And some notes I'm getting of the cheese that I normally don't get with this cheese is sort of those ammonia notes, um, usually associated with a stronger cheese. Um, it, it, they're really working well together. It's making a nice mix. So I'm going to go ahead and add the the next pairing. We're doing a, a couple more than I thought. At least uh, I wasn't going to do the chocolate tonight. We added that in already. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and do a cigar. We got selected here. We've got a nice Monte Cristo, a Cuban we got somewhere. Um, smells great. I was uh, smelling this one before we started tonight. Mm. Dark, earthy notes, woody, like like almost like wet clay, like like clay and topsoil. That that dark, moist soil it smells great. Let's go ahead and get this thing lit up and add this into our, our grouping here tonight. Closest thing you'll ever do to, to, to controlling time is lighting a cigar. Because time just slows down once you light a cigar. This cigar is, is lighting very mild, very full flavored, wonderful earthy notes. Um, almost a, a chocolate tone to it. The, the whiskey seems brighter, more floral with the cigar. I'm getting some stronger honey notes with this, flowers and honey. Um, keep tasting a twinge of smoke 
And it's funny because normally I talk with the pairings, whatever you're tasting in one of the pairings sort of diminishes those same notes in, in the other, in the whiskey. So you would think with the smoke, I would taste less whiskey uh, or less smoke in the whiskey, but I feel like I'm tasting, you know, of course, the, the smokiness we associate with a cigar and the smokiness we associate with a whiskey, a scotch whiskey, are different kinds of smoke. And I feel like I'm, I'm still tasting a little bit. Now I know, you know, lots of, of uh, Scotch whiskeys have a smoky tone to them, smoky notes to them, even not, you know, the, the, they're not an Isla. And I know that this is an Isla because none of the selections that we had to choose from tonight were Islas. Um, so I don't know where the smoke's coming from. Maybe it's just in my mind, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit of smoke in here. Sweet floral honey smoke. Full, rich cigar earthiness. Some coffee and cream, some dark chocolate. Some maltiness. I feel like the barrel's coming out again a little bit more. A little more sweetness, almost like a root beer is kind of coming out as we're getting all these flavors coming together. A lot of complex flavors going on tonight. The greasiness from the cheese, the saltiness from the almonds. Mm. We're going to spend a little few minutes on this. We're going to bring all these flavors back together. I might even throw some chocolate in the mix again. I'm going to enjoy this for a little bit. Well, we, they brought the whiskey out during the last break, and we've been drinking the Highland Park 18-year-old. Now, this is a fantastic whiskey. There was several years where everybody was saying this is the best single malt you know, scotch whiskey in the world, and I can't argue with that. Fantastic whiskey. Um, and I feel a little better um, because now that I have it in front of me, I realize that, that the Highland Park has a little twinge of that peat smoke in it. And I was getting that. I wasn't expecting to have any smoke tonight. Because I said no Islas. But this has got a little smoke to it. So, some things I've noticed with my grouping tonight. The cheese, when I added the cigar, the cheese got a little more salty. Rich, fatty, and salty. The almonds... I think maybe from the saltiness of the cheese beginning to present became a little less salty and a little more nutty and the cigars just continue to to grow in strength and richness and even the whiskeys developing into a more of a, a, a richer fuller mouth feel um, wonderful notes. Uh, I'm, I'm getting more of the, the the grain notes as we go along. Um, the 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 wood. I mean, the 18 years it's spent in the barrel. Um, it's kind of steps aside a little bit and allows you to taste the whiskey itself. A sweetness, almost a tartness and herbalness to it. Flowers and honey smoke. Really nice whiskey. Great pairing with all these. This whole grouping. I'm going to enjoy this a little bit. I'm staring at that last block of dark chocolate here. I didn't want to eat the dark chocolate while I was eating the cheese. I just didn't think those two would work together. So I'm kind of waiting until I'm done with the cheese and the cigar and the whiskey and all as one grouping. And I'm going to finish this up with some dark chocolate now that we've added it. So we'll be right back and see how that works out. So. We've retired the cheese for the night. It was fantastic with this grouping. I've got the dark chocolate out. Again, the, the chocolate wasn't going to be a, a part of the plan for the night, but um, it just seemed to work its way in. With this cigar, the chocolate 
at first almost tastes coffee like Mm. The whiskey now is it's sweet like candy. Cigar is earthy and woody. Really works well together. I love the the the, the trio of a good whiskey, a cigar and dark chocolate. It's a, the the greatest way to finish off a whiskey tasting. Mm. Well, this has been a fantastic grouping tonight. Really enjoy this. this. is one of my favorite whiskeys from year, years back, the Highland Park 18 year. Um, I knew I was going to have a chance of, of uh, you know, tasting some great whiskeys tonight. Um, I'm glad they, they selected for me the, the Highland Park 18. Um, a fantastic dram. A great grouping we had here tonight. Um, I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Cheers, WBSE.